こんにちは上野アリサです、えー、今日はですねなんとこの世界中で猛威を振るっているコロナウイルスですけれども、えー、ワクチン開発に対して世界の最先端で働いている、えー、セピという団体を、えー、ビルメリンダ・ゲイツ財団にご紹介いただいて、えー、今日はセピのフレデリックさんという方になんとインタビューをさせていただきます、えー、皆さんに代わってたくさん質問をえぶつけていきたいと思います。で、軽くえっとセピの説明をセピっていう団体の説明をすると、セピっていう言葉は感染症流行対策イノベーション連合の略です。セピは感染症に対応するために2017年に作られた連合で、今は日本を含むたくさんの国や、えー、国際機関と連携してワクチン作り、コロナウイルスのワクチンを一日でも早く開発するために。活動されていいまますすありがとうございますで私はまあ特にそのなんだろうウイルスとかワクチンとかに全然詳しくないしただ、まあ、コロナウイルスにならないようにもしかしたら自分がウイルスを持ってるかもしれないから、えっと他の人にうつさないようにとかそういうことをやってきたんですけどワクチンのこととかあのウイルスのことに関して自分で調べたりはするけど多分これを見てる皆さんよりも知識がないのではないかぐらいあんまりちょっと知識がない私でもあの分かりやすいようにインタビューを、えー、伺いつついろいろ情報を私も私も学んで皆さんにもあの今の現状最先端で何が行われてるのかっていうのを、えー、ぜひお伝えできたらなと思います。でえっと、インスタにも書いたんだけど数日前に、えっと、インスタであのこういう機会があるので、えー、もし質問とかあればくださいっていうことで、えっと、みんなから質問をねあもらったのでその質問も今日は、えっと、フレデリックさんにぶつけてみようと思うので、えー、ぜひそちらも合わせてご覧いただけたらと思います。というわけで私緊張しております。<笑> Hi, Frederick. Hi, Arisa. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you for your time. No, it's my pleasure. I would like to ask you so many questions today. And could you introduce yourself first? Sure. So I'm, I'm Frederick Christensen. I'm a, a medical doctor.、Uh, I've been working in、um, what we call public health.、Uh, so I used to be a general practitioner, but、uh, have moved more into public health and then global health, working in the World Health Organization, a number of countries in. Africa and,、uh, and now working with the Coalition of Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, which you know, we'll talk more about, is very much engaged in developing vaccines for dangerous and infectious diseases like、uh, COVID 19. And I'm the uh, deputy uh, CEO of,、uh, of this organization now. So, could I ask you questions? Could I start? Sure, sure absolutely. Okay, first question is How does CEPI support vaccine development and how does it select which organizations to support? Yeah, so CEPI is it's a combination of a sort of a, you know, it's a public health organization that、uh, is supported by a number of countries, not least by Japan, who was you know, amongst our first supporters and contributors. So,、uh, very generous、uh, support from, from the government of Japan. And we have more than 20 different governments now supporting. Uh, SEPI together with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Wellcome Trust and a number of private organizations. So, and the way we work is that the money that is, we're given to, to this work, we turn around and we look for good projects,、uh, the best projects in the world to, to you know, be better prepared for, for dangerous diseases like Ebola or like now COVID 19. We've been able to collect, I think, the, some of the best、uh, specialists in the world who sit in our scientific advisory board. And when we release calls, we call it. So, you know, people can actually send us applications to receive support for their projects. And this scientific advisory board then reviews that and picks the best ones.、Uh, and then we support them with both money and also.、Uh, Competency. You know, we, we help them in terms of、uh, how they manage their projects, how they plan to do the registration, how to do the manufacturing, you know, all the things that need to happen before you actually have a vaccine. Please tell me about the vaccine development process. What is the current status of the vaccine development? You know, vaccines are very, very complicated to develop. And、uh, first, you have to sort of 
manufacture uh, them and they are sort of biological products uh, so it's either um, you know a protein or it's a small part of a virus which is you have to grow it in cells then you have to test it in in many steps first in the laboratory uh, to check if it's sort of looks like it's working in the laboratory and then mm. you start testing it on some healthy and voluntary humans uh, like you and me uh, and very often it is the researchers who actually test it on themselves uh, but that's been the historical way to do it and then you increase in different stages um, so you know you have a first stage with maybe 20 30 people and you check if it's safe if it looks like it's working and then you increase the groups in second stage and the third stage and in that third stage <clears throat> that's when you give it maybe to thousands of people and you know you look if those who get it are actually protected from becoming sick and uh, versus those who don't get it uh, and then you know for sure that this is working and, uh, and you've tested it for safety. And where we're at now is somewhere between what we call the second stage and this third big stage. Um, so, so some of the most advanced projects are getting very close to doing that, you know, really big scale testing. That will probably happen during this fall after the summer. Fourth stage is to everyone. Something yeah, like that. yeah mm -hmm. exactly. So it's sort of, you know, First laboratory, and then three different stages of increasing volumes. Wow! In parallel to that, you have to sort of you know build the the factory to actually produce it in in, in big numbers, uh, and that takes a lot of time as well. So, and that's how we're trying to speed things up now. We're we're doing that in parallel to all these stages. We're also building the factories. So that once we know whether the vaccine actually works, then we can also start producing it straight away. Speed is uh, yeah. of the essence here. Uh, but of course, that needs to be in a very safe manner. Uh, but it also needs to be at a very big scale. You know, mm -hmm. there are, we need billions of doses of this. So we need to think now already how to do that manufacturing. And that's, mm. that's the risky part. Are you going to inject? vaccine when it's ready? I will inject it uh, because I will be very confident that once uh, you know we've gone through all those stages of testing and the authorities have, you know look at that data and say yes this is something we should use I will be first in line because I know how dangerous this virus is and I don't want to have it. Because my followers and also including me concern about the after effect or like, is it okay for the pregnancy? I think that's uh, super important and, and very understandable. And of course, something that will be tested, you know, and, and particularly the question you have on, uh, on uh, pregnancy is, is very difficult, but it's being discussed uh, all over the world now, how to actually do those tests uh, so that we can know that it's safe, mm. uh, even for pregnant women. And what are the challenges that may arise due to the urgent global need of a vaccine? Are there any risks? The, the obvious risk, so to speak, is the fact that we are doing this investments in manufacturing already now. And, and many of those investments will be wasted because mm. as a vaccine goes through these stages, many of them will not succeed. You know, right now, there's probably almost 200 uh, different projects in the world. Um, we have looked at many of them and chosen nine. And, and so we, wow. we have nine projects that we are supporting. And that's probably the biggest portfolio of, of projects in the world uh, outside of China. But we reckon that, you know, probably one, only one fifth, uh, so maybe, you know, two of if we're lucky, three of those projects will succeed. So many of them will fall away. And that means that we will be losing a lot of money. <laughs> mm. if you, because we want to have this speed, we're doing investments at risk, as we call it. And so the, much of that investment will be wasted. The other risk is, of course, be trying to be sure that we are really checking on safety all the way. And uh, that uh, we you know, don't... 
cut any corners in terms of the end product here. And uh, when we want to do this at speed, that is of course a challenge, but uh, we're very, very, very conscious about that. And when can we expect to receive vaccines? <laughs> <laughs> That's the big question. Huh? Yes, <laughs> it is. Um, no, as we were talking about, I mean, I think vaccine development is such a complicated process that it's very hard to be sure. We are hoping that we would have vaccines, good vaccines, uh, at the end of this year, beginning of next year. Mm. But, <laughs> but it will be in a small amount, you know, it will not yes. be a mission for everybody. Not for me. Uh, <laughs> no, you're lucky. You're, you're too young. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. And, and healthy. Uh, so in the beginning, it's going, probably going to be for, you know, healthcare workers who are mm -hmm. working. And, and are very exposed to this disease yeah. and it's going to be to our grandparents and uh, and uh, people Elders. who are sick already you know mm -hmm. all those who have a very high risk of uh, actually becoming very seriously ill or die they will be the first ones to get it and so before you at least uh, <laughs> for uh, sure <laughs> that will probably be quite a while yet i'm afraid <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to say, hopefully by the end, end of next year, we will have sufficient. I mean, the goal now is to have 2 billion doses by the end of next year. And that will go a long way. But I cannot even imagine the numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but I asked my Instagram followers, like, if there's any questions about the vaccines or like, development. And I have two questions from them uh, how much will the vaccines cost is like the most common question from them well as we talked about you know we're still early in the development process mm. and um, so it depends a little bit on on which vaccines will actually succeed and uh, how expensive is it to produce those vaccines mm. because we have vaccines some vaccines are you know, built in the way that you actually take the virus and you kill it uh, so that it's not dangerous anymore. Um, but then you, when you inject that into us, our immune system, you know, recognizes the, that and, and, you know, gets triggered. And so mm -hmm. if a live vaccine, no, sorry, a live virus comes along, then it reacts very, very quickly. That's the whole purpose of the vaccine. But if you make a vaccine that way, it's relatively cheap. Uh, I and mean, we, we might be talking about, you know, a dollar a dose or something. There are also ways of doing this which are much newer and you, you actually, rather than, than actually use the, the, the dead virus, you, for example, tell the body how to build the immune uh, response. Mm. And that's a much more expensive way of doing it, but it can be very effective. So, you know, it depends on which type of vaccines will actually turn out to be successful here, uh, how much it will cost. But it, what we do know is that we are talking, you know, in the tens of billions of dollars. That's what is needed to actually get to um, these two billion doses that are the goal for next year. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably, you know, 18, 20 billion dollars is what the world needs to to pay. 18, 20 billion. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have to remember that, uh, you know, for every week that uh, COVID-19 exists or, or is, is stopping the world to function, um, it's costing us, you know, tens of billions of dollars. So compared to what this virus is costing the world, mm. developing a vaccine is actually very, very cheap. We saw how quickly this virus spread through the world. You know, it's now in almost 180 countries. It also shows how important it is to vaccinate all over the world. It's not sufficient just to vaccinate in Japan, for example, uh, because you would still not be able to, you know, get people to visit from other countries or, uh, you know, the, the economy would still not be up and running. So until everybody is vaccinated and everybody is safe uh, until then 
we're not really safe, any of us. Such a huge project. <laughs> yeah. These kinds of diseases really show how important, you know, how interconnected we are in the world, mm. and how important it is to think about, you know, really vaccinating everybody everywhere will also help us uh, wherever we are. So the next question is, uh, would the vaccine be taken multiple times or is it a one time thing? It's from followers. Yes. <laughs> Good question. And of course, everybody hopes that we will have a vaccine that we can take one time mm. and then be done. <laughs> and that's actually what's being tested now. So what typically is being tested is, you know, you, you give some people one dose and you see what happens in terms of their immune response. And then other groups get two doses um, and you see what happens. And so far, I mean, the results seem to show that if you give two doses uh, with you know some weeks in between then our immune system is 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 stronger after that so we expect that two doses will be needed um, but we we hope that maybe one of these will be uh, a one dose regimen mm. but, but i think it's more realistic that it will be a two dose regimen mm. so next i would like to ask you about a pandemic. COVID-19 was classified as a pandemic. What exactly does this mean? Basically, a pandemic is an epidemic, which is just very much bigger. <laughs> and and the, the main difference is that it's in many countries at the same time. You know, when the World Health Organization declared, so they did, you know, did a public declaration that this was a pandemic, it's because it's affecting um, the health of people in many countries at the same time. So it's no longer just one country's responsibility mm -hmm. to, to deal with it. It becomes a uh, international collaboration becomes critical. Um, if it's only in one country, you don't call it as a pandemic? No, then it's oh. an epidemic. So you, you can sort of have outbreaks, you know, very small outbreaks in some region of the country, for example or it can become an epidemic, which is spreading throughout the whole country, or you have a pandemic when it's spreading through the world. Mm. Mm. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think of COVID-19 compared to the past pandemics? What's really a bit challenging with COVID-19 is that you know, it is transmitting from me to you, even though I look totally healthy. And that makes it very difficult to control. Mm. And that's one of the big differences of COVID-19 to earlier pandemic. So how can this global pandemic be solved? Well, two things. One is hopefully, you know, we will have medicines that can mm. at least treat those who become very, very sick and, and, and reduce the amount of people who have to die uh, because of this. Uh, but in the long run, the real solution is probably when we have a vaccine or many vaccines that work, um, because then we can really make people safe all over the world and uh, and get the world back to you know the normal functioning as we were used to before and mm. be able to uh, visit each other and, uh, and um, but that really requires a global effort um, with collaboration both between you know the, the companies who are developing these vaccines countries like Japan who are sort of, you know, generously supporting the work and, um, and all the researchers um, around the world. So it, it really requires a global coordination. Everyone. And cooperation. Yes. So was there any, is there any example like the global pandemic end or like global cooperation worked out? You know, one of the big success stories is about uh, the almost eradication of polio, uh, oh, yeah. where, you know, where a vaccine was developed just before I was born. I mean, the, the, way to, the way we've seen to be able to succeed with polio has been to vaccinate all children uh, in the world. And that means that you actually have to you know, really travel into the most rural areas of the world, into the smallest villages, and, and reach every, every, every single um, area where the, the, the virus is uh, still spreading. This becomes 
of course, we've seen in practice very difficult, particularly in areas where there's maybe, you know, a war going on or, uh, you know, there's civil unrest. It requires a tremendous effort and collaboration. And, and it's been a success story in the sense that, you know, you've seen private organizations and public organizations and UN organizations all, you know, work together on this. And, uh, and that's what is required to actually get to a good result. So is it happening right now as well? Like if one is working on the COVID vaccine or like medicine or? The development is, you know, relatively, I would say very, very, we've never seen anything in the world uh, with, you know, so many projects focused on one disease. That's historical. What's still very challenging is actually to get all countries to collaborate. Because what we're seeing is, you know, countries become very nervous and they start investing in projects directly themselves mm -hmm. uh, to try to ensure that, you know, their populations are uh, get the vaccine. But that's a very, very, not a very smart strategy, to be honest, because when you invest in just a few projects, you don't know if they're going to succeed or not. So you might end up with no vaccine. So it's much better for countries to get together and do this together. We have the World Health Organization and a global organization called Gavi and with the support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and CEPI have sort of put together what's called Access to COVID Tools Accelerator and it's a, a facility which will you know invite all countries to work together about this and mm. I know that uh, you know, Japan, with its great support, uh, will you know, hopefully be one of the, the leading examples of how we can do this together rather than do it on an individual country level. So you <laughs> mentioned Japan quite often. And what is the role of Japan for this situation? Yeah. No, I did because, you know, Japan is one of the, the big supporters of CEPI. And we're... Um, yeah, and that has to do both with financial support, uh, but also we have, uh, you know, Dr. Ichiro Kurane, who's from the National Institute of Infectious Diseases in, in Japan, on our board, and, you know, contributing to our work. And we also collaborate with the University of Tokyo uh, mm. on uh, a vaccine project, not for this disease, but another disease. So, um, so I think everything from, you know, and of course, you have a big manufacturing industry for vaccines in Japan, which is very, mm -hmm. very interesting. So, so Japan is, I would say, a critical piece of this global collaboration um, that is, you know, has been developed and is being further developed right now. So, uh, well, thinking, of course, about the, the, the value of this for Japan, but realizing that you have to make people safe in Japan, you also have to think about how to make people safe everywhere. I'm glad, like, uh, we contribute somehow as a Japanese, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. You have all reason to be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any way we can prevent diseases from expanding so that we don't have to experience something like this again? Well, I think, um, yes. I mean, I think there's several things. So one is before this outbreak, you know, CEPI was working on what we call vaccine platforms, mm -hmm. which is um, to sort of have a, an almost ready vaccine that can be used for anything new that appears. So it's, it's sort of a plug and play vaccine where you can, you know, you have an almost ready vaccine and then you have this new virus which is threatening and then very quickly you can combine it and have a vaccine ready for production and so if we can speed up the way we do development that that is one thing the other is that this global collaboration we're talking about and, and that countries are ready to actually finance that work together and agree on how a vaccine will be spread out over the world those things those kinds of agreements should be ready already now so that we're ready for the next uh, pandemic because there will be new outbreaks, there will be new pandemic threats. And uh, so we need to learn lessons from this one and be better prepared. Mm. For it. 
Finally, is there any way I, along with my viewers, can help? Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the offer. I think, uh, no, I think, I'm, I'm, it, you know, it's everything from, of course, respecting the social distance requirements so that we can stop the, the transmission uh, mm -hmm. to, you know, supporting or, or talking positively about the good work that the government of Japan is doing and in terms of supporting these kinds of uh, developments all over the world. Mm. And because if, if we're learning something from this, it is the fact that we need to, you know, try to make everybody safe in the world. And it's only when first, when everybody's safe that we will be safe. So, um, the importance of thinking not only about yourself but really thinking about the globe mm. is really important here and, and and then the third piece is probably just you know the value of uh, vaccines and as we've seen in polio uh, you know it's taken a, since the vaccine came for polio you know it's been calculated there are 16 million people who are not paralyzed now anymore so the value of the vaccination is uh, amazing uh, the challenge is we don't see those 16 million people we don't know who they are it's hard to see the value and you forget how important vaccination is but um, you know so be positive to vaccinations be positive to the global health and remember your social distance okay <laughs> i will <laughs> thank you so much frederick i've learned so much today thank you alicia it's been uh, tremendous talking to you and uh, I thank you so much for your interest in, in this topic. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>